What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. What's better than one tree? That's right, two trees. Today we're gonna to be assembling and reviewing the Two Trees 3D TTS 5.5 diode laser. So hold on to your hats, kids. It's another laser assembly video. Just to give you a little frame of reference, a company called Made the Best about eh, like eight months ago now sent me out a diode laser. At that point in time, I'd never used a laser in my life wasn't really on the radar, but I was curious like a teenager on prom night. And since then I've assembled and reviewed, I would say eight to 10 diode lasers and I do have a CO2 upstairs. So I have done this a time or two. And now let's check out Two Trees latest offering. Now this machine is definitely a budget friendly unit coming in just under $300. I believe it's $299 on their website. So it's definitely affordable, but when you pay less money, you have to assemble more parts. <laughs> So just keep that in mind. I watched the assembly video on this thing and it was bonkers, kids. It was bonkers. Oh, so sexy. Let me pull out my readers. It's time for Nerd Facts. This is the model TTS. Its wavelength is 450 plus minus, whatever that means, uh, five nano, meters to what we just said that was necrometers nanometers whatever nm focal length is 23 millimeters input voltage is 12 volts maximum luminous power is s5500 milliwatts i think it's all the facts you guys really want to know isn't it i do really dig that this is magnetic it just that's a really good option to have um, I think the Afuro was magnetic as well. But I just like that as an option on there. Oh yeah, and before I go any further, did I mention I'm giving one of these away? So stick around to the end of the video and I will let you know how you can enter to win the Two Trees 3D TTS 5.5 diode laser that I'm gonna assemble right now. We've got your pair of obligatory crappy green laser glasses. If you don't have any other protection, use these until you can buy better protection. Pick yourself up a pair of these. I will link these down in the bio. They're about 40 bucks. These are gonna protect your eyes way better than those things do. A uh, much wider spectrum of laser, these filter out. If you have the green ones on, a lot of times you can still see the beam. With these, you cannot see the beam. If you can see the beam, that means that some of that's still penetrating the glasses. This is not Two Trees' fault. Everybody sends those crappy glasses. I don't know what that is. Does that look like anything to you? It looks like something to maybe hold your phone or something. Normally these things don't have wood on them. Well, it's not holding my phone, but my, home, my case is enormous. This looks like the uh, motherboard and all the, all the goodies. All the goodies are in there. Goodies, tools more goodies front and back and i believe this is the laser mount with a belt grr we're still in a budget place so i will preface it with that but so many lasers now are going to like a more modular design where the belts and everything are already inside the unit now i will say this the belts have been run through these two it looks like so that's that's a bonus, but it looks like we still got a string of belt up. Um, just, it, it just, it, it just adds for user error. I don't like it. And that is it. All right, this is where it gets a little screwy. Come here. You have to take this apart and take this little screw right here out with not that one but this one i'll probably grab the wrong one again guys use your universal size just saying all right so in the instructions it says 
something about an M416 screw, that's this. All right, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this out. Where's my belt? The belt's gonna run on either side of this. I am guessing, come over here. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna go around this belt. I'm gonna pull that tight. We're gonna slide this guy back in here and we're gonna put that screw back in. And this side, it looks like it should be facing up. If the, if the instructions are correct. Okay, so let's try that. And we'll put this tensioner back on the back, back there. I'm just trying to figure out, like I'm, I'm trying to work ahead <laughs> because this is gonna go on there, okay. All right, so this is the tensioner for that side. Okay, everything I told you on that end was right. I just had the belt flipped. So just kind of, this thing tends to fall over because it's top heavy right now. Um, and so I just had it laying on its side and I, I wasn't paying attention. It's gonna be easier if you don't have any tension on the belt. This is why I don't like dealing with belts. It's just too, too easy for somebody to mess up if they don't know what they're doing. And you know, I know what I'm doing and I can very easily mess this up. Okay. All right, we're stuck on something. Kind of weird. Are we gonna go under? How do we go under it? I swear on the video they went over, but this, this the housing on this thing is all the way up. Or the spindle on this thing is all the way up. This is gonna be fun, kids. Here, we're just gonna, we're gonna give us way too much slack. And luckily I have tiny little girl hands. No offense, ladies, but I have tiny girl hands. Okay. Okay, now that we got around those teeth over there, we're gonna pull this, make sure the teeth align. We're gonna take this down here and we're gonna flip that up. And we're gonna put this here. Make sure that we didn't get our belt stuck on something like we just did. All right, there we go. Okay, belt, now. All right, so now this piece is gonna fit in there, kinda. Now we get that on there, slide this back in. Oh, this is gonna, this is all gonna have to happen at once, right? All right, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna push that in, push this guy in here. Hopefully, we can get this far enough back to grab. Pay attention kids, I didn't realize that this thing will stick on either side. <laughs> so when I put it on, I put it on the top and then I thought that was the top and I put it on that way. That is not the top, that is the bottom. I'm not gonna go crazy with the zip ties yet because I like to make sure that everything is functional first, but we will do one of these just because uh, I have a feeling this is just gonna be flopping around if we don't, so. If we flip the switch and it comes on, we did good. Oh yeah! Okay, so as I'm sitting here thinking that the adjustment knob being down here is in the most inconvenient place ever, it occurs to me <laughs> that this entire piece is upside down. <laughs> so we gotta take all this off and put it back together. All right, everything is turned over and we are back heads. And now everything looks a lot better. I was just getting ready to complain about a design flaw in it and it turns out it was user error. Go figure. Welcome to Build Dad Build. Cable management's a little wonky on this. You got stuff going everywhere. This business is not unusual. The wires is coming right out of the front of it. I don't know why that's a thing. I guess it's easier to manufacture. I would just somehow have, be able to plug into the back of the thing, but that's not specific to two trees. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move her a bit. And then um, let's, Move up. It's, the gantry and everything's pretty, oop, that's too far. Uh, gantry's 
uh, pretty solid. I would give it that. Like I said I'd like to see more of a modular design, but it is a it is a kind of discount beginner unit. Nope. I didn't realize I'm that far back. There are no limit switches on this. There's no limit switches on the D1 either. So you just kind of need to know where your things are in space. Okay, so you want to do this. Okay, that's the one thing. Let's let's go ahead and zip tie that one too. I thought I heard a belt making noise, but what it was was this rubbing, and we don't want this to rub. So. All right, and while the TTS is on its virgin lasering experience. I'd just like to jump in here and say thanks for sticking around until this point in the video. If you like this video, hit that like button. If there's a particular laser that you would like me to review, leave it in the comments and I will reach out to that company. If you want to see more laser reviews, let me know that as well. But most of all, if you want to see more laser reviews and more things you can do with a diode laser, a CO2 laser, and possibly, possibly a fiber laser, Click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I put out a new video. And of course, I'd like to thank all of my patrons. These guys are the ones that keep the lights on the shop. They keep whiskey in my belly. And we've had a lot of things going on over at Patreon lately. I'll link to my Patreon page down below. Head over there, check it out. Join up if that's your thing. If you want to support the channel, that's one of the best ways you can do it. Speaking of supporting the channel, I would like to give an extra special thanks to my top tier or Boilermaker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Christopher Walters, Todd Stewart, and Franklin the Tanklin. I will, I'll cheers you with my, my pinhead. Cheers. All right, now let's go check this thing out. Okay, so now that we've had sufficient time to kick the tires on the old two treats here, um, I wanted to give you some more nerd facts. I apologize if I've said any of these before. Let's see, the model is TTS 55, I guess. I've been saying 5.5 because I thought that was the wattage of the laser output, but I think it is TTS 5.5. It's made out of, the material is aluminum metal. The control board is an LTS ESP 32, 32-bit. Engraving size, so the bed is 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, so it's a, a little smaller than your normal ones, uh, but it does come, or it doesn't come, <laughs> but you can buy an extension kit for it. Um, you can get a USA, a EU, UK, and an Australian plug set for it. The accuracy is 0 0.08 millimeters. The top engraving speed is 10,000 millimeters per minute. You can access this via USB, app, or Wi-Fi. And it supports laser gerbil and light burn. Now, let's check out summary sluts. Okay, so I used Louisiana Hobby Guy's new universal test burn card or whatever he's calling it, I'm not sure. Version eight. I will link to that video down below. You can go check it out. And I gotta apologize to Rich <laughs> because this laser, the module sits so close and the shield around it is, is, is pretty dark. It's hard to see the, the beam. I walked out, I thought it was finished cutting and I went to pick it up and I, and I messed up. I messed up the cut at the last possible second. This card should actually have been cut out, but if you look, like it went off the rails right there because I'm an idiot and thought the thing was done. It's also pretty quiet. I didn't realize, I, it, the, the fan on it is not nearly as loud as some of the other ones. First, check out these fonts. So he goes up to five millimeters or down to five millimeters, I guess, but look at, you can read the one millimeter there if I can focus on it. But those all look great. This is the power scale for this, so this is what everything's cutting at. He has this great engraving task, which gives you an idea all the way around. And then you can also see how 
um, this thing will cut some different hinges. You guys saw the engrave and the cut of the cardboard. That turned out really well. It doesn't want to focus because it sees my face. Oh, there we go. Did a little bit of leather and that guy looks pretty decent as well, um, as expected. So it definitely will cut and engrave on leather and it does. And look at how dark that is. That looks good. And this is three millimeter walnut. Um, so we did it we got that dark engrave. I think I went a little heavy on the engrave. If you look at it real close, like the details, I think it's a little muddled by the heat of the laser, but it did cut through it as well. So noise, noise, noise. It will definitely engrave on acrylic. So there's that. It did have a little bit of a rough time cutting. So I did do two passes around here and uh, it didn't cut all the way through. What I wound up finding out is that five passes at 100% power, 25, or 250 millimeters per minute uh, will, will, cut, will cut through. So if you wanna work with acrylic, you can definitely do it with this laser. Okay, so final thoughts on the two tree laser. It's a solid entry level machine. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to put together, but I kind of feel like you need to go through those pains once just to kind of understand the guts of your diode laser. It engraves and burns just exactly how you'd expect it to. So thumbs up for this laser. Now, if you wanna know how to win this laser, that's all you gotta do. Follow the link in the description to my webpage, fill out the form, hit submit. So I apologize for not being able to give you specific dates, but I'm not sure when this video is gonna come out yet. The day this video comes out, we're gonna run that contest for two weeks. And at the end of those two weeks, I'll do a quick live stream where I'll announce the winner. All right guys, so good luck to all of you. And until next time, thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work. What's up guys, I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. Insert laser quote here. <laughs> I'm out of them. What's up guys? I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. What's better than one tree? That's right, two trees. Unless you're One Tree Hill. That's a pretty dope show. Somebody stepped on a duck again. It's amazing how much that, how often that happens in the shop.